How's it going? This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 497. Today, I'm joined again by Mr. Josh Blum, and we are unpacking the famous ladder fight scene in Jackie Chan's first strike. Hang on, it's a ton of fun. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, show host and Whistlekick founder, and everything we do at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts, karate, taekwondo, kung fu, anything that you define as a traditional martial art, you'll probably find something about it in something that we do. And if you want to see everything that we do, go to whistlekick.com. That's the place to learn about all of our projects and our products. It's also the easiest way to make a purchase. One of the things that we make. And if you use the code PODCAST15, that'll save you 15% off anything, whether that be a uniform or sparring equipment or maybe a shirt. There's a lot of great stuff over there. Everything for this show, Martial Arts Radio, gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We release two brand new episodes every single week. And the purpose of the show, well, it's to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists that we love so dearly throughout the world. If you want to help the show and the work that we do, there are a number of ways you can help. You can make a purchase, share an episode, follow us on social media, tell a friend, pick up a book on Amazon, buy our strength and conditioning program, leave a review, or support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick, that's the place to go. Now, Patreon's a place where we post exclusive content, sometimes multiple times per week. And if you contribute as little as $5 a month, you're going to get access to that. That content includes text, photo, video, new episodes that only show up there. Sometimes we release drafts of books. Uh, When we launched the Strength and Conditioning Program, we gave it away to everybody in the $25 and up tier. We really try to make sure that if you're contributing via the Patreon, we're going to give you more than you expect. That's the whole business model over here. If you've been following the show for a while, you know we've done a few of these fight scene analyses. Josh Blum is the host of the 13th Hour Podcast, and we have a lot of fun working together. Now, he's doing some medically related things as we recorded this. He is not quite on the front lines, but he's involved There's stuff going on right now, and we don't usually talk about what's happening in the wider world, but we are in the midst of COVID-19 right now, and I want to thank Josh for spending some time, for talking with me, for recording. I always look forward to our conversations, and even though we don't usually put any kind of time context on the episodes that we do, I thought it was important to acknowledge his making time to do this recording, because it meant a lot to me. Now, again, if you've checked out these episodes in the past, you know the drill over at the show notes, or you can even find the link in the show notes on your podcast player. You can find the video that we're working from. We're starting at a certain point in time, and we'll mention that when we get there. But go ahead, load up that video, and let's break down Jackie Chan's first strike and that famous ladder fight scene, one of my favorites of all time. Hey, everybody. So I'm back with Josh. We're going to do another one of these fight scene analyses. Is that what we've been calling it? Fight scene analysis? Yeah. I, th- I think that's what we called the last one. Sure. Yeah. And first off, thanks for coming back. Thanks for doing these with me. These are a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. My, my pleasure. I'm, thanks I'm enjoying that. this. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in the future, we will end up with uh, a side gig as fight choreographers. Well, the way things are going, like, you know, it's you know, with, with everybody kind of quarantined, I mean, you know, that's uh, sports are going virtual. I wouldn't see, I can't, I I would imagine like, you know, uh, I I can imagine that happening. Or at the very least we we could be the Statler and Waldorf of fight scene choreography. I don't know if you get that reference to the Muppets (laughs) for for anybody listening. Those were the, the, the crotchety old men in the balcony. And one of my dreams is to be paid just to heckle like they did. If somebody could pay me to just sit there and heckle something, I just think that would that would be the best. And so heckling a fight scene on set as they're they're laying it out, that would never work. You know, I just I think I think that would be a really good time. Yeah. Of course that's what we do anyway, right? <laughs> it really is. I mean that's kind of what we're here doing today. And I'm really excited about the one that we've we've chosen here today because it is one of my favorite fight scenes of all time from one of my favorite films of all time with one of my favorite actors of all time, and that is Jackie Chan's First Strike. Yeah. And I'm going to guess that anybody that knows that movie knows exactly the fight scene we're talking about. 
I well, so I've seen this movie a long time ago, and I don't actually remember the premise of it. Like, well, I, you know, like obviously the plot is not, you know, a lot of these movies are probably not, you know, necessarily like key. But um, just as a refresher for folks like me or folks who are listening to this that haven't seen First Strike, can you do me a favor, do us a favor, and just like give us a one-liner on it? Besides Jackie Chan, like you know, fights lots of people, <laughs> right? Yeah, this is one of those films that got released in different places under different titles. And according to IMDb, this is this is their one liner. It's this installment of Chan's police story film franchise. So I, I think it's police story two or three mm, yeah. has our hero trying to locate a missing nuclear warhead. Of course. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, those are some pretty high stakes. Yeah. And if you're if you're missing a nuclear warhead, you obviously send one person after it. Yeah. Just pick your best person. You're right. He's not armed either. Although he is in this scene, but unconventionally. And we'll talk about that. That's right. That's right. Now, if you've participated in the last couple of fight scene analyses that we've done, you know that we are fond of slowing the video down so we can say more about it. Well, today, instead of going to half speed, we're going to go to quarter speed because there is so much going on in this one. And, and I want to I wanna thank you, Josh, for encouraging us to do that because I probably would have defaulted to half speed and just felt frustrated. So yeah, there's a little gear on the lower uh, right-hand side of YouTube. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes to where we're queuing the video up, um, and then you can pick the playback speed from there. So this is, uh, for all you math majors, 0 0.25 on the little drop, drop up menu, drop down, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, so I, I've got it. Are you, are you ready to go? I am ready to go whenever you are. All We're right. Starting at uh, three. Three seventeen is what I have. Okay. Does that work for you? That works for me. All right. How about a countdown from five for the people getting ready? Sure. And five. We'll, we'll go on one. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I got to mute the audio. Oh, and here we see Jackie uh, Drew raking a, is that the right word? I don't know. He's, he's using a, a ladder uh, to defend himself. Um, yeah, it's a good it's size. It's an aluminum ladder. I mean, t pretty, pretty standard. But the way that he uses this, and he's, here he's rolling it over his back. He's picking it up. Yeah. He's using it against these guys that have staffs. And then, you know, right there, he goes, he uses the advantage of the ladder. Like he goes low, he uses the, the I don't know what you call it, the steps of the ladder as almost like the catch the staff in there. And yeah. then this part right here, I wonder how many times it took him to hit that right. The diving vault through, through yeah. the ladder is just utterly phenomenal. Anybody who's ever worked with a ladder like this knows that they're in certain angles, they're very flimsy. You know, it's an aluminum ladder. Yeah. It's got to be lightweight. And that's why he's able to spin it around overhead right. here. And well, here, finally, he's using it kind of in a collapsed form, um, which you would think would be the easier way to do it because he starts out with it when it's apart in like the A-frame thing, which must, must have been incredibly awkward. And here he's using it like for the sweep and everything like that. So more like a traditional staff. I love that part where he puts it over his head. Yeah. And that part right there where he swings it out. Yep. Bops the guy with it. And what I, what I really love about this scene, the, the reason that I think this is the most, oh, and the, the, the strike oh, through. And, right, and the cage. Right there. <laughs> the guy's Boom, brings it down on him. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine being in a fight and having someone bring a ladder down on top of you and then oh, punching so, you in the face? and So disorienting. In the belly. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, like a miniature game of whack-a-mole. Yeah. Right there. This is another one. So the diving right through that, just the, the two rungs, it must have been what? Like, what does that look like? A foot, maybe? In between the two rungs? It, yeah, there's not a lot of space. You can see he barely fits through there. Yeah. And this is one of those, those aspects of this scene. It, it showcases the creativity, but also Jackie's confidence in doing yeah. what he does. And this is why I think it's the most, uh, it's the best example of, his choreography that I've ever seen right. because it's creative. It's funny. I mean, there he is shaking his hands. We talked about that in the last couple, yeah. you know, his sense of humor. Right. And yet there's, there's some legitimacy. There's some credibility to the way he's using this. 
Like, wouldn't you get out of the way if someone was I would absolutely around? Like, get out of the way if someone swung a ladder like, at me. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm just going to get out of the way. I don't want to get hit in the head with that or anywhere, really. <laughs> Shaking out his hands. And and so, like, that that segment we just watched, that was, like, um, about 30 seconds, a, a little bit more than 30 seconds. I just, we were talking a little offline about how long it must have taken for them to put that whole thing together. You have 30 seconds or so of footage. Like, how long do you think that took for them to do that? Well, I'm, I'm going to guess that every cut, every time we see a cut in the scene, you know, that's probably an hour of setup, yeah. making sure everybody's on their marks, because there's a lot of risk when you're swinging a ladder around. Right. You know, this yeah. isn't uh, uh, an empty hand scene where they can intentionally just, you know, punch off to the side of the head and catch it at the right angle and make it look good. Right. Yeah, there's, I love a, this when he there's a lot of consequences down on the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> I just love his coveralls. I, I would, I really want a pair of those. I think they look great. Um, I would definitely do work around my house in those. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what, what those are or why he was. I don't remember why he was wearing. They look like a pair of snow pants. Snow or 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 fishermen. Yeah, is they, this, they have some kind of water repelling movie? property. A, it's been a while since I've seen. Is this the movie where he? jumps out of the helicopter and goes like skiing or something. I think so. The, yeah, I think that's this one. Like Honestly, as much as I love Jackie Chan and I love Jackie Chan movies, the plot and the actual movies blur together for me. Oh yeah. I mean, it's so kind of, yeah, I love Jackie Chan movies, but I don't always, you know, I can't always tell you which ones I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were originally going to do the full, like the full, it's like about a four minute clip here when he's fighting all these guys in this house. But, um, because there was so much within the, just this ladder scene, like even watching it at quarter speed, I feel like there wasn't enough time to talk about all the different aspects. Like I have, I have like a page and a half of notes here yeah. about the different things. And, you know, we don't really have time. To, like it's going too quick, even at a quarter speed, to really discuss things kind of in detail. Did you have anything in your notes that we missed that, that you want to point out? Well, there was this one, I don't know. It just, again, it's like one of these things that it's, it's not a, uh, it's certainly not a re- um, it didn't add anything, I think, to the, uh, I guess, combat, but it was like an interesting thing that I think probably took a long time to get right. And it was like a typical Jackie Chan thing where he has the ladder and he kind of like flips it. I think he like rolls it down. So it's flipping like sideways several times uh, and then rolls it back up and he gets it over his head. Mm. So um, that, I, I don't know how... Uh, how uh, how long it took how many tries it took for him to do that it was a very stylish uh stylish stylish no stylish uh whatever um i i know i know what you're trying to say yeah, yeah that, that he did that um i'm sure like took multiple different times for him to get the the thing rolling in just the right way um i guess the, it was the other thing too was that obviously the weight or the balance point of a ladder is going to be just really much different from anything else because it's so um wide and it's also so awkward yeah um, and the the balance point with when you're using it in the like the a-frame form is going to be much different than the the one where it's uh compacted um and so i imagine he must have had to figure that out beforehand you know to, to try to just see how he can move with it I, i'm gonna guess that they said you know let's do something with a ladder somebody had the idea and he said okay you know give yeah. me some time to play with it Mm-hmm. And he probably swung that ladder around. And and what I find interesting about this fight scene is there are there are movements, and you can really see it at the end when he has that ladder slung across his back. Yeah. In a very, you know, almost wushu looking pose. Yeah. yeah. The the influence of his traditional martial arts training and and right. Chinese weapons training absolutely came through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great point for like uh you know, obviously this is stylized and everything like that, you know, um, as these movies always are. But I mean, it, it's a good point because, I mean, you know, when you think about the different weapons that people train with, um, these were things that were, you know, obviously uh, kind of used because they were just lying around at the time. Um, uh, you know, uh, Sai, Tonfa, Staffs, whatever. They, they had another use then. And so people are like, well, why should we learn how to use those things now? Because we don't have those things lying around. But, I mean, you know, uh, things start to become more generalizable. 
um, long, you have long things, you have sh like short clubby kind of things, you have blades, that kind of thing. So if you kind of learn something about one, you have some idea how to use something else that kind of would fall into that same category. So I don't know, a ladder. I don't know. What would that be? I mean, that's kind of like a staff, I guess. It's a staff, but there's a, there's another element to it because it opens. Yeah. You know, and, and honestly, I think the other traditional martial arts weapon that his movements remind me of are nunchaku, nunchucks. Yeah. In the way that he yeah. keeps it close to his body, moves yeah. through it. Yeah. You know, that's something that you see with, with uh, nunchaku practitioners versus, sure. you know, bladed weapons, say. Sure. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it is flexible in a way, right? Because that, that, that arm opens and closes. So yeah. the thing, well, there's one part of it. I think it was, uh, where is it? Yeah, about 39, uh, three minutes, 39 seconds or so, where he uses the, he unfolds the, um, the ladder and then it springs back again, but he uses it in kind of like the way you might flick out a, you know, a flexible weapon like that. Mm. And kind of like a, like one of those, like if you've ever taken a towel and rolled it up and snapped it, he kind of uses it in that very same way. Um, so there's like a, you know, like the, the what you would do with a flexible weapon, like a chain or something like that, um, kind of comes into play. So it's, it's really interesting that he kind of explored all those different things. Uh, the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting is because of the reach of it, um, he he did, you know, he wasn't just hitting people like in the in one particular part of the body. He wasn't just attacking one thing. He was going for multiple different uh, levels. So like sometimes he was attacking their legs. Um, sometimes you could attack two at once because of the, like if he held the ladder the other way and it was kind of like, uh, the, two, the ends of it were facing outward. You have almost like two stabs that are, you mm. know, protruding out. Um, so you have a high and a low. Um, and so that, that's a kind of a nice, uh, nice thing that, um, that he did there. Absolutely. And I think the last thing I, I want to kind of say about it is, is that as I'm watching this, you know, the circular movements, that's not where I would go. You know, and not to say that, that, that there's no practical element, but again, what I find fascinating about this fight scene is you've got, you've got an unconventional weapon being used in a, to a certain degree, traditional way yeah. that exemplifies his training. You know, my training is much more linear. You yeah. know, Okinawa, my, my weapons training is all Okinawan. So yeah. I would have been, striking people with the ends of that and using it in a very, you know, kind of square way. Right. I mean, like more like a thrust. Yeah. Yeah. I was just about to ask, like, if, so if this were you, maybe this is an interesting, you know, question for all the audience um, folks. If this were you and that's what you had uh, at your disposal to save yourself from getting clubbed by all these guys, um, how would you use it? You know, would you would you use it like you know what Jeremy was saying, thrusting it? Would you swing it around? Would you throw it? Uh, would you you know use it as a distraction? Would you use the cage kind of aspect of what Jackie Chan did, <laughs> which is very creative? I I don't know how how many people would be able to pull that off, but uh, um, one Jackie Chan. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, was this this is one of those films I think where the outtakes, right? I, I do remember watching the outtakes where he gets stuck in the ladder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, trying to dive through it but um i i think it's you know an inter interesting exercise i i think um i was trying to think while watching this how what i would do with this hmm. i i honestly don't i think i probably would have kept it relatively uh compact like i probably wouldn't have i, w I probably wouldn't have thought to open it just because it's so unwieldy that i figured figured it, it it might come open like when you're swinging it around but I think I probably would have kept it kind of close to my body. Uh, um, maybe some thrusting, maybe I would imagine probably attacking, like I probably would have gone low, like ankles and, 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 and shins and stuff like that, just because you have the element mm. there, you know, and then they've ever slipped off a ladder and banged your shin on one of those lower rungs, you know, how, how badly that can hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're falling on top of the ladder. Right. So, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, uh, because then you would kind of lose the ladder. But um, he does use the, like the sweeping kind of thing. Uh, I might have thought to do that. But the other other sorts of things like that, I 
uh, opening it uh, and flipping it around, uh, you know, um, he, he does this one thing where he's like twirling it around like a staff. Um, I, it worked to keep people away. And certainly I think people would stay away from anything like that unless someone was, I don't know, high on PCP or something like that, but um, <laughs> didn't care. Right. Uh, just actually, you know, I don't know, maybe just that, uh, the fact that you're um, using it as a, um, as cover you know, holding it there and um, kind of moving it around so that when people try to reach you, they can't because there's this big piece of aluminum stuff between you and them. I mean, that might be another thing. Uh, and you could probably generalize that to lots of other things in day-to-day -day life, you know, things in the environment like a, sure, I don't know, a coat rack, uh, an IV pole, uh, whatever, you know, happens to put you between you and whoever's coming at you. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I suspect when they were working out this choreography, it was important that the attackers have staffs yeah. because of the the element of being able to go through, having them caught, you know, it kind of equalizes the range. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have seemed very fair if they were unarmed. And if they had um, swords or something like that, it probably wouldn't sure. have gone on as long. Uh, if they had guns, I mean, obviously that they just would have shot him. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not a very good fight scene, right? That'd be very. It's short. not the Matrix, right? It's like that scene in Indiana Jones, uh, first one I think. Where he, you remember that where the guy uh, like uh, yeah, he does, does the fancy around. flashy and yeah, and, and he, he just shoots him. Shoots him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that in ages. Classic. So, um, any other thoughts on this? No, no. I just I I hope people will kind of take it and, and, and look at it, draw their own conclusions. But I, I like, you know, how we're talking about how would you use this? How would you apply some of this thought process to your own environment, to the casual objects around you? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, if, if you have the opportunity, maybe pick up a non-traditional weapon, quote unquote weapon, and swing it around, you know, see what the advantages are. What are the disadvantages? You know, maybe the next time you go, compete at a tournament you're not bringing a ladder but <laughs> maybe you well, are i don't know i don't know that'd be pretty cool there's sometimes an open uh category or whatever. to go reenact this scene just with yeah. the ladder part that would yeah. be great yeah. anybody I, anybody that would yeah. get it would yeah, love it right. does, does that i don't know i've never been to a tournament where that where someone just brings like a random thing but that would be like uh i mean everybody you know kind of does the same thing ultimately and that would be really unique, I'd have to say. I've never seen it done, but I keep threatening to some of the promoters in my area. I'm going to show up with a <laughs> shovel, and I'm going to do a forum with a shovel. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. Like, you know, I mean, that's ultimately everybody always, always says, like, oh, but you could, you know, you could jury rig these kinds of things to defend yourself. You could, but like, you know, if you don't practice it, like a shovel is built differently than you know a bow staff or whatever. So. Right. Um, well, one thing that Jeremy and I were talking about that if you like, you know, just let us know is we were talking about, you know, whether it'd be interesting to take a clip like this and pause it at a random time. And then just, mm. it didn't work so well for this one. Cause like this whole thing is centered around improvised weapons, but, um, see what's available in the environment and what, what sort of things in that scene that you can see at that particular pause moment, could the the hero or the villain used to uh, defend themselves. Mm. So it's yeah, we'll do that next time. Edit. Yeah. Yeah. So let us know. Right on. Cool. I think this is a good place for us to end. Yeah. As always, thanks so much, Jeremy. Yeah, Until thank next you. Time. Once again, I want to thank Josh for working with me. I enjoy our, our collaborations and look forward to the next one. I hope you all enjoyed it too. And if you do, make sure you're checking out his podcast, the 13th Hour Podcast. It's a great show. Josh does some wonderful stuff, both related to and not related to martial arts. So make sure you're following him and everything he's got going on. If you want to see more about our show and what we've got going on, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Remember, every episode has its own page, and that's where we post photos and links, transcripts. If there's a particular episode that you enjoyed, maybe you wanted to get more out of, check it out. Now's a great time to find more information, more context for this show for any specific episode we really try to make sure we give you all we can on that front and if that makes you want to support what we're doing 
you can help us out. We've got a lot of ways. You can visit the store at whistlekick.com. And if you do use the code podcast15 to save 15%, or you can leave a review, buy a book, buy a program, buy a shirt, or contribute to the Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you see somebody out in the world that's got some whistlekick swag on, make sure you introduce yourself, say hello. Maybe you'll make a new friend or training partner. If you have suggestions for guests, email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, and I'd love to hear from you for any other reason, too. Our social media is at whistlekick, and we post stuff constantly. That's it. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 